Many Kentuckians have a connection to the land their families have lived and worked on for generations, but perhaps no family has as unique a connection as the Bransfords, who not only worked on top of the land, but under it. The land they worked is now Mammoth Cave National Park. This is their story of labor, their loss, and of how one member of the Branchford family is helping to restore the connection between his family and a world-renowned part of Kentucky. This is a Mammoth family story, and it's told by Jerry Branchford. Mammoth Cave is the longest cave system in the world. The last tally that I knew about was 406 miles of cave, and uh, the research and uh, the exploration of it, it, it continues today. Yeah, I never knew I was going to be here as a tour guide, but my father, David Bransford, made sure that we knew who we were, where we came from, and the contribution that old kin folks provided to make this such a, a successful cave system. The generations that were in slavery here would have been my great-great-grandpa, Madison, and Nicholas, and they were the first two to arrive here from Nashville, Tennessee. So Nicholas and Madison Bransford, my kinfolk, were brought here at age 15 and 17 years of age. Their owner leased them for $100 a year each as two of the three original slave guides in Mammoth Cave. Records say that these slave boys picked up the tricks of the trade quite quickly. They were known as slaves at surface, but once they got down into the cave, people of royalty were glad to depend on slaves to look after their welfare. General George Custer, King of Russia, and the list just goes on and on and on, the people that were their clientele and guests. That's how they learned to read and write. We think folks from England or maybe Australia taught them how to leave their name on the cave walls. They were allowed to purchase land, and the, the land that they once owned is up Flint Ridge, probably uh, the next ridge across the field from the Vista Center here at Mammoth Cave. My great uncle, Matt, he actually had money, money even among whites, that he did so well. He had a hotel and lodge there. There was a need for people of color that when they would come to Mammoth Cave as servants of well-to-do whites that they need the place to stay. So Matt built the place. Matt Bransford's Hotel and Resort, it was actually second to none. Now, what I'm about to tell you has been passed down through my family for generations. Nicholas, it seems that he became very discontented and asked the old captain, what would it take for me to get my freedom papers? The old captain said, Nick, you raised me $400. I'll let you have your freedom papers. So Nick would tour guide during the day, and at night, he slipped back down in the cave and catch those eyeless creatures that free folks would give a nickel or a dime for. 1859, nickel was about $30, you know. So they say he was about seven years raising enough money to buy his freedom papers, and that he did. So the old proprietor signed a document saying that Nick was a free man. He goes to Nashville, Tennessee, and he realizes that just because you have a, a document signed by your previous owner didn't mean people treat you no different. And he soon to realize that, well, my life was better at Mammoth Cave because free people were looking up to me. Now I'm down here in the barn lot. People don't have no respect for me. I think I'll go back to Mammoth Cave. And back to Mammoth Cave he did come. This became a national park in 1941. Unfortunately, they knew there was a transition period underway, but probably the men of color didn't realize that not only were they gonna lose their property, but none of the men were gonna be tour guides. None were grandfathered on. So all 507 families on the 53,000 acres were all bought up. And by 1941, the transition period was over. A few years later, no man of color was to be seen anymore. And as time goes by, it seems that our story sort of went away. But my dad made sure that his family knew. I don't want the story to go away again. And that's the reason that I'm pressing on here at age 70, because I don't think, I really don't think down inside me that I'm ready to go and my job is just not complete until I have a day where I can feel that some things are put in place that won't allow the story to go away as it did for 64 years.
I really find joy and a feeling of accomplishment when I walk in the cave, especially in the places that I know that my ancestors were actually trotting through 180 years ago. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna keep marching until the day comes. Folks say when that day comes, I'll know, right? But it ain't today. <laughs> this is just one of many stories that can be heard and experienced only in Kentucky.